Hunter X Hunter episode 49, Pursuit X and X Analysis. I know we have to go this route. I know we have to go this road, but couldn't we just stay with the appraisal arc for a while? <laughs> it was going so nicely. I know, right? Yeah, mind your business. Oh, they're bounty hunters. You should mind your business. Oh, Liori hired them. We were putting them in danger. When did he become so capable? Turns out we just weren't in his element before. His element is hustling. They know everything. Well, he settled up, alright. Heineken, the, the official brand of the Phantom Troop. Go in there, hit him with my fishing pole. <laughs> Says Liorio, the, the weakest land user of all of them. Oh, this is actually really interesting. How do they compare? So he did it. Okay, so that establishes that. But it was challenging. Wow. Okay. Alright. Yeah, that's fair. Lero didn't see what we saw. That's pretty terrifying. Alright. Picture painted. <laughs> the fear that lives in their hearts from Misoka. Obviously. Who didn't? They were being so obvious. Wow, they can sense that from there. Honestly, the way Kurapika is going. And they felt that from hundreds of meters away. That is going at his most normal. It's not heads or tails. <laughs> oh, they got a special spider coin. ホカニもボディーガードは何人かいて顔と名前が分かっているのはこの5人。もうすでにデッド。芸量団がプロハンターサイトを利用しているのはまず間違いない。手を打つのが遅れれば、ネオンに危害が及んだかもしれん。例を
Kurapika just rises higher and higher in these ranks of the criminal underworld. And that's how Kurapika came to work with Kalua's father. Now it's personal to the Phantom Troop too. There's always antiques. Kalua taking charge. Failure is death. Leorio, you uh, stay here. That is cr a critical promise that you need from God. Yes. You must do what I say. You must trust my judgment. Yeah, we still gotta keep an eye on our side quest. You did a great job. Followed some butterflies. Retroactively <laughs> pissed at you. I actually have jailed people before. It's like a weird thing, I can say. In my time as a private investigator, most of the work is like just trying to locate people and see what they're doing, which means waiting for them and waiting for them and waiting for them and then tailing them. One thing I was trained on and I found it to be true is that when you're tailing someone, you as the pursuant, because you see it through your lens, it seems so obvious that you're telling them and that they're going to spot you at, at any moment. A lot of people just don't because if you're not thinking about it, why would you even be checking or keeping track of the cars that are behind you? Oh, the first time I ever tailed a guy, he did something super illegal on the highway. Like he jumped a divider in his truck and I thought, oh, wow, he must be onto me, right? Like why else would a normal person do that? No, it, he was just, <laughs> just doing that for whatever reason, missed his lane or something. That was a heart stopping moment. Where you get into trouble is when people are really suspicious already, when they're paranoid, when they have reason to suspect that someone's after them, or if you get overcome and some key areas of trouble are like following someone in, in totally remote areas because then there's just less stimulus that they can latch onto in terms of pattern recognition or just any moves that are out of the normal or are like abrupt or call your location to mind because it's about frequency of thought like if if someone distinctly takes notice of your car multiple times that thought will just emerge in the few months I did that job I got made definitely once because the guy literally pulled me out of my car probably twice because the behavior of the person I was following was so it was too perfect to not have been aware of me. Those were my two blown cases. You know, it's one of the hardest things that the movies don't really show is like choosing where to park and wait. Like, first of all, if someone abruptly stops, you have to also abruptly stop, but you have to figure out a way to do that organically. And that can be tough to improvise. And then if you're waiting for someone to come out of their house, you need to be sufficient distance from their house so you can see them coming out. But if you're too close, obviously it's more likely that you get made. But of course you can't always choose parking, right? That's again, an improvised skill. I think that's the most difficult element of it. Okay. They're definitely going to get made, though. They're just too powerful. They, they felt the three of them existing in a hotel room 200 meters away. I feel like they already know. No, no, no. See, they're too smart for that. They're playing a game of their own. I want it for you, Kalu. I really do. But is this his heritage at stake a little bit? That's, yeah, this is what I was saying. This is the hard part. This also is accurate. You don't know. It's like screaming at you that they know, but you don't know if they know. Yeah, the person who made me, the person who pulled me out of my car, he revealed to me he had noticed me from the beginning, but I had no idea. He just played it cool and like waited until I was not paying attention. さそいに乗ってこないね。多分鎖野郎じゃないかもな。なんで経営からして尾行してるのは複数だ。
Yes and no. Weirdly, I just heard a logical puzzle that this relates to. One framework for thinking about knowledge is to have knowledge of something means you have good reason to believe something and also that thing happens to be true. What do you call it then in the case where you have a, a solid reason to believe something to be true and the thing is true, but for totally different reasons than what you thought. You're walking down the street and you see someone dropped a, a pack of cards and as you go down the street, you find cards one by one in sequential order from diamonds to spades, let's say. And you get to the king of spades on a corner and you think as soon as I turn the corner I'm gonna see the ace of spades and you turn the corner and there's no ace of spades on the ground but there's an advertisement that contains a picture of the ace of spades did you have knowledge that you would see the ace of spades or not I went to this fried chicken sandwich place where they have really good mashed potatoes and I didn't order the mashed potatoes and I sat there wishing I had ordered mashed potatoes when I got home and looked at my bag they had accidentally given me mashed potatoes so did the guy get my order right or wrong <laughs> I mean this is not really useful for this episode but he's right that they're not connected because there's something totally unforeseen to him which is that they happen to be acquainted through totally other means. How'd you figure that out? Wow. The older I get, the more I, I appreciate instinct over rational thought. Taylor's dilemma. I don't know if I trust going <laughs> to run. Oh, I said that loud. Alright, phone activated and leave. We got a snitch? Whoops! Oh my god, they didn't wait for the, the cell phone. Oh, damn. It was a double fake. They were so worried about the people they were tailing. They missed their own tails. Oh, that was a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Did you escape, though? <laughs> Yikes. This is, this is a different kind of combat. This is for, like, life or death. This feels so different already. Oh, he's way more powerful. He's just admiring. Thanks, sir. Oh. It just occurred to me because, you know, death is always at stake for them, even in the battle arena and in the hunter exam. But as far as I can remember, Gon and Kalua haven't been in like this overt of a life or death situation where it, there are no rules. It's not a facilitated event or whatever. It's like literally just criminals trying to survive. It feels fundamentally different. He's killed that quick. It would appear. I don't answer questions. As it so happens, I do. Although maybe Gon doesn't know that Kurapika is using chains. Total coincidence. Gon doesn't really lie. Their ignorance of Kurapika's chain use might save them. My, my, oh. and also my dad. That was a good way to dodge that. No. Yeah, that's right. I reject your binary choice. Reject. Total reject. We've done this already. We did the hunter exam. I choose life. Wow. Wow. Hope they don't have any pictures on their cell phone or anything with Kurapika. Oh, wow. We're here. And hey, there's a familiar face. What's up, Ahsoka? <laughs> Is it weird? If, I feel like if I'm going, I'm a little bit relieved to see Ahsoka. He'll vouch for me. We've been through a lot together. We passed the hunter exam together. Speaking of coincidences, Hosoka definitely the devil we know in this situation. Wait a minute, isn't Kalua's brother a member of the Phantom Troop? That could get messy with like three family members involved in different levels. God, there's so much happening. Kalua's father maybe having the chance to come in and be dad, wipe the floor of the Phantom Troop. I feel like Hosoka would be very aroused by Kalua's father. Hunter obituary. Oh, okay. She can heal. Yeah, 
and she rejected Ahsoka. For a couple episodes there, I was waiting for Gwen and Glue to get involved with the with his arc and with the Phantom Troop. I did not expect them to literally join the Phantom Troop or go into their lair. Just one episode ago, we were having a great time appraising artifacts, and here we are in the den of thieves. Couple good points though. They don't actually know Kuripika, or they don't know about the chain user thing. They're gonna be just as surprised. Maybe Clue is father. Hisoka's here. Hisoka, weirdly, being a ray of hope for reasons I can't fully articulate. He doesn't want to see Clue and, and go and die, though I guess he wouldn't do that much to stop it. And he would facilitate it if it helped him get to the boss, probably. But still, we know we know each other and they don't know yet that we know each other. That's leverage. And finally, the number one ace up our sleeve that will surely come in and save the day and not bumble anything. Leorio, Leorio's a lot there. Figuring out his way in, surely. 